So someone asked about the two lightning bolts versus helix. Again, this is a deck list that I've copied. The only thing I changed was they had two wrath of God. I split wrath and supreme verdict for the purposes of playing around meddling mage. Um, I kind of like the suite of red removal that they've picked. Lightning Helix is not only good against burn, but also when you're just racing in general. While the mana efficiency from Lightning Bolt is very valuable in the early turns of the game, as the game goes longer, the health that you gain from Lightning Helix tends to be more valuable than the tempo you gain from Lightning Bolt being cheaper. Because it's the same reason places don't run ads for year round on the same television channels justin or the same the same shows and stuff like that while a lot of the advertisements that i have on the stream are for gaming related stuff that people buy constantly so they make sense to be long term for things like clothes or other consumer items like that that we're going to have some advertisements for coming up uh, those will be shorter campaigns by and large i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep this i feel like i'm not i'm not playing this hand to not keep this I have no idea. This is, again, I copied a random 5-0 list that I was looking at that seems sweet. I looked at the sideboard and I was like, this is definitely a deck I'm keeping. I'm going to play. Yeah, that could see play. Cards like that that are flexible are really valuable. Like, a sweeper that's also not dead against lantern control and is, like, very good against bogle seems okay. Bolter Helix, Bolter Helix, tilt. That's fine. They get one card off of this. We get to electrolyze it next turn. Flex Flexibility goes a long way in a format like Modern where threats are diverse. Play a second Bob. Play a second Bob. Play a second Bob. Tilt. Yeah, I think trying to ambush Viper, the Dark Confidant there is pretty terrible. There's a good chance they have removal. So we'll do this now, which does give them a window to Blood Braid Alpha, but I think we just need to cut the card advantage from Dark Confidant off the table. Yeah, I don't really think about standard much when I evaluate when I evaluate cards. I might, I might, I might dive into playing more standard when Kaladesh rotates, but until then, probably not. All right, so you're saying, you're saying we've got some Snapcaster Mages. Yeah, I, I definitely think there's games like that, Drew, but I think they're not games like this current one that we're in. I think I think we're definitely in a control deck role at the moment and not a burn you out role. Dear Lord in heaven, please don't cabal therapy me. Please, please no cabal therapy me. No, no whammy. No whammy. No whammy. Uh, I will play formats on stream that I don't normally play for a $100 donation. That's why That's why we cubed this morning. There was a $100 cube donation. That, that extra money not only covers because I have to do more work to become familiar with the format that I don't normally play, but it also covers because, generally speaking, formats I don't often play have lower viewership rates. Plus, much like Cube, there are a lot of people that all they do is stream standards. So, like, there's a lot of standard content out there. The focus for... I think I only have one deck in the 24-hour stream that won't include 
both Goblin Guide and Lightning Bolt. So Goblin Guide and Lightning Bolt are the cards that I'm looking for. So we're gonna we're gonna snap snap electrolyze this turn. Maybe maybe binning the secure the waste was greedy there, but this channel runs on greedy, so I'm gonna do it. Shut up! All the people in chat that are like, I discard the, the Snapcaster Mage. You hate value and you should feel bad about it. You can you can and should feel bad about the value that you despise. Stop stop it. Discard my Snapcaster Mage. Get get out of here. Why do you why do you hate drawing cards? Why what what was done to you as a child that you hate drawing cards as much as you do? We're not gonna die with six cards in hand. Get out of here, you negative Nancys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can we just talk about that one for a second there, chat? Can we just talk, can we just talk about, talk about my friend Path to Exile here? Can we just talk, talk about my friend Path to Exile. And the giant, my, my friend Path to Exile just goes like this to all the negative Nancy's. Just like, middle fingers to the sky. Middle fingers to the sky. Middle fingers to the sky. Do, 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 do. They could draw enough lightning bolts to kill us. They could, they could draw enough lightning bolts to kill us. We're looking for some helixes here. Like a flurry of blood braids and bolts. No, I'm just gonna path snap path here. Ten, 10 out of 10 snap path snap path snap path. I am streaming on Linux right now. That's why I have a real terminal right here. A really, really wonderful, really wonderful terminal. It's got bouncy effects and prettiness. Everything's better on Unix. That one, get it out of here. Uh, it's called Terminology. It's written using the Enlightenment Foundation libraries. So I actually want to avoid cracking this fetch land until we find a helix because I would prefer to not die to a double bolt. That terminal has a bunch of features that you'll never need out of a terminal, but like, for instance, it can play videos in its background and fun things like that. Jundalway, that's true. I could, I'm gonna electrolyze here because I want to dig for Lightning Helix, I think. Have, they, they don't even know about the rest of our hand, Ch opponent. You don't even know about all my candy. You don't even know about all my candy. This is, this is, can you help me install Cockatrice on Linux? Oh. Uh, fostered by magic addiction. I'm not sure if I should love or hate you. No apologies. All of these come in, right? Now we just get to double Bane Slayer them. Exactly. I'm pretty sure we cut all of the counter magic. Is this an Emrakul matchup? Emrakul might just be for other control decks. This is probably going to get stuck in my hand and kill me. This is probably going to get stuck in my hand and kill me. These are definitely all great. These are these are all in our lives. I want I want all of these in our lives. Probably trim of bolts here. What do we think of this? I think I like this. I don't play Jace the Mind Sculptor because I enjoy winning games of Magic the Gathering. Uh, we did not lose a match, Camwell. I'm actually a limited savant. I just don't like to play it on stream because I don't want to rub it in people's faces. 
And we're cool in. Bolt is marginally better on the draw. That's true. What do I cut though? I like all these cards. I like all these cards. Yes, cutting cryptic is crazy. No, it's probably not crazy. It's probably better than this bolt. Cutting this bolt on, especially on the draw. Yeah, there's no, there's people looking for a way to cheat the Emrakul into play. Stop it. Play good, honest magic. Tap your, tap your lands and cast your Emrakul. This hand is, this is way better than having two cryptics in this hand. That wall of roots has become undervalued in Kiki Court. Adding trackers to the list gives greater utility. Maybe, like, it's just tough. Like, Kiki Court's a deck that likes to flood out. And if you're playing trackers, you kind of just want to play more actual lands in the deck, which just disincentivizes you from playing more, from playing more, uh, more other things. Look, by modern standards, that Emrakul is ridiculously fair, okay? Like, absurdly, ridiculously fair. Thoughts on blue-white miracles. I think straight blue-white control in modern, I, I don't understand the appeal. I don't think you gain enough from... I think having access to Lightning Helix in Jeskai removes enough of the downside of playing a three-color mana base that you should just be playing Jeskai instead of blue-white. I don't, I don't understand the appeal. So I'm going to bolt this here at end of turn so that way if we draw a Snapcaster Mage, I can snap bolt it to finish it off. Yeah, blue white blue white is on my no fly list. I really don't enjoy playing it. We have a couple of draws here to find find another burn spell for this Liliana. And like the Liliana is just one for winning us, right? So like we don't really have to worry about the Liliana until she's nearing ultimate. And this just one for ones us, so like that's not a big deal either. Is blue white walker? It depends on what it what it looks like. It, I mean, it probably need to be a more mid range list. Like Restos or Finks and Blade Splicers. You could do that in Just Guy, yep. You could just play more lands and play some fields. Like Lightning Bolt and Lightning Helix. And, and honestly, just like the fact that Snapcaster Mage is so much worse in in Blue White Control is a big deal. Like Just Guy is a much, much better much, much better Snapcaster Mage deck than Blue White. And pff, we just traded a land for a Bloodbraid Elf. An opponent super punted here because if they would have done this before they Bloodbraided, they would have been able to K command this back and generate card advantage. So pretty, pretty big mistake there from the opponent, I think. They must not have a... They must not have a basic mount in their deck. You can throw bits at me, Justin. Justin, you should hide your bat your bit leader badge so we can see your crown. We can't we can't see your crown through your bit leader badge right now, Justin. They have a third blood braid? That would make sense why they discarded the second if they have a third. Do, 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 do. Uh, I think I just let this happen and I'm gonna like end step bounce this Liliana draw card. To resto decks. Yes, definitely, Laradex. Definitely. Not having our fifth land is so sad. I think we're pretty dead here. 
Do I show them Lyra? I feel like I should concede and not show them Lyra. Yeah, we're pretty far behind. I think it's not not worth showing them like the creature lands too. Yeah, but like I needed to keep the spells that I kept. Like if they didn't have the ravines, I could maybe play to drawing a sweeper there, but the ravines makes the, makes drawing a sweeper much much less less likely or less good. Uh... <laughs> Who's ready to never draw a third land and die? I'm ready to never draw a third land and die. That's how, that's how these ones always go, right? <laughs> Is there seriously not a sacred foundry in this mana base? Why are people so terrible at building mana bases? Why are people so terrible at building mana bases? I just assumed this is what you get you. This this deck 5 owed. You shouldn't you shouldn't just look at results. You need to think critically about. I kept this hand being like, yeah, we'll fetch Sacred Foundry and then we can just draw any lands, right? Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. At least we're lucky. We've got we've got that going for us. We've got lucky going for us. Justin the enabler. Jeff knows he became my nemesis the day he decided to make me pay a thousand dollars for a barbershop league. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna play this, I think. So we can secure for two and block. Their bobs never hurt them. We could have funded two whole barbershop leagues. That's true. You could have you could have funded two entire leagues of barbershop. Yeah, if they attack here, I'm going to secure for two and then double block. I agree that no foundry is bad. This is the right link. If you are if you are interested in learning more about building mana bases, there's a there's a wonderful URL for you. God, we are so fucking dead. I guess I guess I drew that. We're still pretty dead. This is really good against our Lyra. Bin verdict here. Yes, we need to rip like Snapcaster Mage slash Burn Spell into into second white source. Like that could keep us in this game. Like the Lyra could maybe steal the game if we can get this Liliana off our back. 
Purge is a good draw too, yep. We're down a purge. We have a purge in our discard pile already. But it is it is an additional out. That cut Snapcaster Mage from being a live draw, which kind of sucks. Do I... I just for them, right? The only way this game is ending in our favor is in a flurry of burn spells. And Bob and Bob doing the Lord's work. I think it's just like, Nug, you go. Are we dead on board? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, we. <laughs> I am a powerful wizard. Powerful wizard. Hmm. Hmm. This magic game, it's tough, Chad. This magic game, it's it's a tough game. They don't let anyone just they don't let just anyone play this game. Only only skilled magicians. Demir Spy, you should look at the deck list. We're actually playing both. Bobby! Bobby, I'm counting on you, Bobby! Bobby! Please, Bobby, please! Don't give it to him. Don't want to give it to him. All right. All right. Massive priority. Trigger. Oh, jeez. Holy crap. That's so bad for us. That's so bad for us. Oh, jeez. I, it wasn't the win, chat. Their top card would be different, okay? Their top card would have been different if I would have shuffled their deck. I think if they're spending their resources gaining health with scavenging ooze, that's a good thing for us. So they're going to get to edict their own Dark Confidant here. And they're going to get to Fulminator Mage or Colonnade. So we need... Uh, Snapcaster Mage, or Lightning Bolt, or um, any of our other burn spells to end the game. Sweeper also keeps us in it. Sweeper doesn't keep us in it. Oh, yeah. Just, just like we drew it up. Just like we drew it up. Ice, ice, baby. Boo -doo 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 -doo. It's nice. It's nice to run hot, chat. It's nice to run hot. It's, we ran, we ran pretty good at the end there. We ran pretty good at the end there. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Celestial Colonnade is quietly one of the best cards in this deck. Just quite, quite possibly, quite possibly the best card in the deck. It's very, very good. Yes, this is a good example of why, like, Jeskai is great. Good, good example of why Jeskai is great.
I mean, Emmercool promises the end. Don't you want to end the game? I want to end the game on occasion. The, the promised end is there for those long control mirrors where you really just want them to be over. And Emmercool is like, yo, dog, I got your back. End this shit. Oh, yeah. Who's ready to be Ponza, baby? I think I'm supposed to hold up Logic Knot here, right? Pretty sure I'm supposed to hold up Logic Knot here. They're not Ponza, I hope. I'm gonna fetch a scolding turn. I think Land War Elves means not Ponza. That's true. The white bordered basics do scream, hey, I'm Ponza a little bit. <laughs> I love the regulars here. They're great. This could be a uh, primal command. Could also be getting acidic slimed. Yeah, it looks like mono green devotion. I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and bottom that uh, that Ascanta. Just like looking for a land, right? I don't think I want to wrath this board. I think I just want to hold up Cryptic Command. Go on, just hold up Cryptic Command. can't escape look mo modern is essentially competitive cube that's why people like this as a format this format is essentially competitive cube do I care about the extra mana from this? I guess it's decent. I think I want to just counter draw though. Their deck tends to have so much air in it. I want to just find like Snapcaster Mages and shit. I think I'm supposed to bottom that logic knot because with how much mana they can generate, I don't really have the resources in my discard pile to like cast two logic knots effectively right now. So I'm going to logic knot whatever their play is next turn and then we'll untap in Wrath of God most likely, clean the board up a little bit. They have another powerful play after this primal command we could get into a little bit of trouble. No, I think I'm going to clean up. I'm going to clean up the Arbor Elf with the Wrath of God. So I think this is fine. Oh, this this kind of sucks. So this means they can pay four here. So I have to exile a bunch. Cast the world's worst cancel. Oh, do they not have a land? That's really good for us. So they get to they get to primal command us here. Well, need to clean their board out. Uh, 
Oh. Yep. Yep. Is Primal Command a better command than Cryptic Command? I mean, Cryptic beats Primal Command. The fetch land at least lets us shuffle our deck here once they top a land this turn, which is nice. I mean, like, the opponent doesn't have any pressure in play either, so, like, they're looping this command and it's, like, annoying, but, like, it's really just one for oneing us over and over again, right? You should read what Primal Command does. Have a 10-minute break while you do that. Yeah, that's true. It is a two for one. You're right. All right, so they're going to have four mana up when they play this Eternal Witness, possibly five. So I can snap Logic Knot them now. It wasn't anything special. It was just someone not knowing the text of the card. And making, trying to give me a correction based on not knowing the text of a card. It's fine to not know the text of a card, but just like, don't tell me I'm making a wrong play if you don't know what the cards involved do. I think I'm gonna leave Cryptic Command in there for when I draw another Snapcaster Mage on the line. <laughs> Jade Light Ranger. Okay. Neat. I'm assuming they're binning that. That's probably a keep. A timeout prevents someone from posting in chat for 10 minutes. They are still able and welcome to watch the stream. Just removes their, their privileges to talk. Chatting. Chatting is a privilege, not a right. Uh, Charbelcher is not, not considered burning for the burn stream. Of course, Tino. Can I actually configure how long the default timeout is? I'm triggered by all these white bordered basics. That's why you play the white bordered basics. And the, and the, the thing the thing you need to know about Magic Online is if anybody's playing white bordered basics on Magic Online, they had to intentionally go out of their way to get those white bordered basics. So it, like it really sends the message that like I did this on purpose. These are these are not in my deck by mistake. I'm gonna hold Snappy back for now. I think. With this Helix, I can probably race them pretty efficiently here. I lied. So we're taking 7-10 here, down to, down to 5. We got Sweepers in our deck. Our Cryptic Commands to buy turns. We're actually not dead on board. They're at 0 cards. 
No, but there's a there's a button when you click on someone's name that controls controls what it does. Search for Ascanta. That's probably not good enough. I'll take a Snapplecaster Mage though. Why didn't they attack us for one? So, here's a question. Do I tap their team draw a card or do I just snap path? Is snap helix actually better than snap path? I think I'm just gonna snap path. <laughs> How is that play to win? Like I just need to get their threat off the table. Like our our average card quality in our deck is like far and away higher than their average card quality, right? Like they're playing a ramp deck with just a bunch of mana in it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure after I said that we're gonna brick off and die and they're gonna draw all gas, but like, I think it's reasonable to path there and just like hope that the top of our deck ends up much better than theirs. We, we drew a lot of stab casters, Raj. Oh, geez. They're setting the loop back up. They... They shuffled their graveyard back in and they're picking Primal Command back up. That's hot. That's, that's hot. And hey, look at that. Our opponent drew action in their deck full of air and we drew two lands in a row. Sounds about par for the course. I mean, our card quality is better is an accurate statement. Doesn't mean we're guaranteed, but... I mean, like, we just need to draw a cryptic command to be in the game, right? These fetches are actually helpful because, like, when they top our lands here, we get to shuffle. Wait, they just put my graveyard back into my deck? Uh, thank you? Thank, thank you, I think. Oh, Hornet Queen. Okay. We have Wrath of God and Supreme Verdict and Cryptic Commands as redraws. We drew another land. Yep. Sounds about sounds about par for the course. Definitely a logic not matchup. Yeah, Stidic guess is probably pretty good. <sighs> Negate's probably reasonable to stop their commands. I can't say this probably isn't a search for Azkan to match up, right? Like, it's pretty mediocre against them, them flooping our things. Trim this secure. I don't think Spellcaller is very good. I guess it stops Eternal Witness. I don't know. I feel like this is a Wrath Verdict matchup. I feel like I don't want to board in Spellcaller in the Wrath Verdict matchup. Emmercool is an I win button for the control mirrors, basically. 
These decks have been playing a Baneslayer Angel on the sideboard, and I kind of like the split. The card's very powerful. Decks like Mardu Pyromancer and Jund want to board their removal out against you most of the time. So bringing in this threat that their bolts don't kill, that they literally can't race because it has lifelink is a big deal. We've been very bad at drawing Teferi so far in this league, that is for sure. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I had to put some nuts in my mouth. Don't we all, right? Look, they're all... They're all natural nuts, too. All natural nuts. I think that's fine. No idea. Jade Light's more aggressive. Still provides devotion. Beast within, rude. I remember I, I walked up to a, it was a table at an SCG open and there were, there were two people playing at the table and it was uh, just Kai control versus red green Titan that happened to have copies of summoning trap in their deck. And both players had Graftigger's cage in play. And it was just like, well, one, one of you really fucked up here. I don't, I don't know which one it was, but one of you has made a terrible mistake. It could have been that both players have made a terrible mistake. You're not wrong. You're not wrong.
The static caster needs kill marks. Are they beast withinning my is it static caster? Please be beast within my is it static caster. Need one more land so I can play Tefri while holding logic not up. I know they have beast within in their hand. I don't want to trade my Tefri for a beast within. Now our static caster gets to kill them, chat. Isn't that exciting? Isn't it exciting? I was wondering how we were gonna close this game out. Thankfully our opponent had the solution. I think I just let this happen, right? Pretty sure I don't care about that since they gave me a beastly. Uh, my article today was literally spoiling the card, Matt. As a, as a heads up. I plan to order... If I stream more than my normal six hours, I tend, I tend to order takeout. So, I'll probably get takeout twice during the day, and then Matt's going to bring me a late meal as well. Panera Bread and Jimmy John's both delivered here, as well as a local place called Avanti's. as well do this they're down to one card in hand and i have a cryptic command so your move yugi boy what's going on clutch Heading to game three. Quill man, thanks for the seven month free subscription. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thank you for the continued support. Just for keeping me employed. Is this a spell queller matchup? The more we play, the more I think it might be a spell queller matchup. I just don't know. I don't know. What do we think? Is it worth cutting? Am I supposed to cut these sweepers? I think we're supposed to cut the sweepers. I think I'm gonna do this. Let's do this. Let's let's turn into a tempo deck. Avantis. I've heard the, I've heard those on the radio before. When I when I when I'm driving a short enough distance that I don't feel like turning my head my Bluetooth on for Pandora. Local radio stations. Ooh. I don't know. I could see just like actual sweepers not being 100% necessary. This is fine. It's got an opt. Again, love to fetch a fucking sacred foundry. Can't.
I've never seen one outside of Bloomington. And I've traveled a lot. I think we're dead, Jet. Think we're dead. All right, I mean, that's a good one. And like, yep. And because we don't have a sacred foundry, I can't like get red and white mana with this, which kind of sucks. So they can, they have infinite mana here. They have three, six, seven, eight, nine. They have 10 mana this turn. Sometimes you get nut drawn. It's, and that's that's the thing about playing decks like Jeskai Control and Mardu and Blue Black Berries and Green Black Midrange. Like, one of the things that I shy away from playing these decks in modern, like at a competitive tournament, is that while I think these decks have a lot of good tools and they're very powerful, like Jeskai especially puts up a lot of results, um, the fact that we will never be able to have a game like that where we get this nut draw and run our opponent out of the game to offset the nut draws where we get run out of the game feels bad. I know I know from a from a gameplay standpoint like this deck is powerful and reasonable and consistent this archetype is decent but from an emotional standpoint it feels really bad to get stomped out of games like that and not have similar games where I get to do the stomping. Fairies is one of the decks I'm considering playing in Indianapolis. Yeah, and po honestly, Possibility Storm is a good example of, of, you know, a deck like that that's able to have interaction but also have free wins on occasion. And the other thing, too, is Pie Guy is that having a nut draw doesn't automatically mean the deck is inconsistent either. Like, there are a ton of combo decks in Modern that have very powerful nut draws that are also very consistent decks. Well... Never forget, chat. Stoneforge Mystic is too good for modern. Please don't kill me. Oh, God. Am I going to get to untap? Am I going to get to untap? Holy crap. I think we're going to get to untap, chat. Holy gosh. Damn it, Bobby. I got, I got so excited, chat. I was so excited to get to untap. Stoneforge Mystic is too good if you ever untap with it, you basically win the game. As a storm as a storm player ever untapped with fucking Burrell and not won the game? Has that ever happened in the history of modern? Yes, I'm being hyperbolic. I know that that has happened. Shh. Shh. Don't you don't have to tell me that yes, that that's happened. I know that that's happened, chat. Alright, what are we doing? We've got a bunch of cards to board in here. Uh, I think I'm going to keep two, two ways to kill goblins. I think that's the right. I've done it once and it was my fault. I misplayed. God bless. Tefri's pretty bad here, right? I almost did, but then I realized what deck I was playing. Boarding in one copy of Purge to maybe hit their one or two of seems really narrow and bad to me. It seems really narrow to me. I 
to give your opponent the hope for a second turn and then kill them. They've they've beaten they've beaten down my spirit, chat. I thought I, I was so excited that I was possibly going to get a third turn a, a, a third turn, and then they ripped it away from me. The the turn three storm kills are like turn three Tron, right? When do they have it? Always. When do you have it? Never. I think I just need cheaper counter spells and removal here. This is a good example of like opt being good this game, right? We're gonna get to play Celestial Colony tapped on two, and then we get to shock in Hollow Fountain and hold up Spell Queller or Snap Opt. Whereas if this opt had been a Serum Visions, we would have to choose one or the other. So gaining, gaining some flexibility. Based on our cantrip decision. You could maybe argue I should shock in and hold logic not up here for their, their mana dork on two, but I think it's better to hold up spell color here. I don't know. That's tough. There should definitely be a sacred foundry in this mana base. There's, it is any mana base that's a three color mana base in modern that doesn't have at least one of each of the shock lands in those three those three color combinations is just some hot nonsense. God bless us, everyone. Ooh, ooh. This is match three. We are in game two, and we are down a game. We kept a hand without removal. Our opponent played a turn two creature and they killed us on their third turn. Logic Knot looking stellar as always. Four Logic Knot seems a bit greedy to me. Maybe I don't know though. Mardu Pyromancer isn't a Mardu deck. It's a red-black deck that is faithless looting to cast Lingering Souls. A lot of the times Mardu doesn't play, doesn't play Godless Shrine. But that's, that's different. They call me Jeremy with the brand new tier two sub. Thank you very much for that generous level of support. Um, be sure to drop me a message in private and let me know what deck on my donation queue you'd like to bump up this month. As always, tier two subs get to bump a single deck in the queue 10 points every single month as a thank you for that, that extra level of support. I actually haven't done software related stuff for uh, work since uh, since Jake was born. A lot of, a lot of the work I did um, I did some freelance stuff, but a lot of the work I did after I started staying home with the kids was teaching related. <sighs> feels, feels bad, man. Feels bad, man. Well, we could, we could be dead here. They only have one floating red, so I think they're just putting Burrell into play and passing. But we, we could die if their hand is good, like Ritual into Manamorphos into Gifts Ungiven. Probably Ritual, Ritual, Manamorphs, Gifts Ungiven. Yeah, I'm not surprised we get to untap there. God bless us, everyone. Such a such a skillful trading card game we play here. I'm just gonna end step my Snapcaster Mage here. That's a good draw. It means we get to hold up spell quiller plus logic knot.
I just like keep wanting to go fetch Sacred Foundry out of instinct here. Just like I have enough blue mana. Amulet of Safekeeping is a neat card because it's weird to see a card that split hates a deck like Storm along with a fair deck like Mardu Pyromancer. It's really kind of interesting. This is why we end step that Snapcaster Mage chat, by the way. You gotta you gotta kill your storm opponent. Give an infinite time, the storm deck is gonna is gonna beat you through any amount of disruption. You need you need to end the game as soon as possible. I like the four quellers in the sideboard of this deck. Seems neat. What if we didn't do that? So here's, here's the thing about hate cards that I feel like I have to repeat this every time they print a new one. Whenever... Wizards of the Coast prints a hate card. I feel like everybody wants these hate cards to be, I cast the spell, the deck I'm casting it against immediately loses the game. And that's not how hate cards work. Not how well-designed hate cards work, at least. A, a well-designed hate card is supposed to be a piece in a winning puzzle towards letting you win the game. That's, that's what a well-designed hate card is supposed to do. So you're not just going to cast Damping Sphere or Alpine Moon or or the Amulet of whatever it's called and beat Storm or beat Mardu Pyromancer or beat any of these other decks where this card is reasonable against. It's just a piece of interaction that's going to help you combine with other pieces of interaction to create an interactive game of magic. That's why they're good design. If they were cards that you cast them, they resolved and your opponent immediately conceded the game, those would be poorly designed cards. Good, good gameplay, well-designed cards should create long interactive games of magic. They'd be Blood Moon, right? Yeah, Blood Moon is a shit, a shit design for, for a magic card. All right, so I think I'm just supposed to let this happen and then Cryptic Command the pieces of the puzzle here. I could Cryptic one of these Grape Shots, but there's a good chance they get to kill this anyways. Well, we didn't get remanded, so that's nice. If they have a Past in Flames here, I think we might actually die. Usually they trim some Past in Flames when they trim on Gifts Ungiven, though, so that's nice for us. All right, two shots with the old Kalanad here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Alrighty. Yep. Now I'm really glad I didn't try and counter the grape shot. Because we would have gotten wipe away and they would have cast their other thing. Past in Flames is probably lethal next turn. Need to draw a bolt or a helix here. Or a counterspell. Counterspell also stops the past and flames from doing its thing. All right.
Are we deterministically dead? I think we're deterministically dead, right? Past in flames is spell one. This is spell two, three, four, five. We actually not deterministically dead here. All right, I'm gonna auto pass and let my opponent uh, masturbate vigorously for you all. I'm gonna run to the restroom. I'll be right back. En enjoy the splooge. I always hear those soft sax elevator musics in my head. Nine spells. Oh, they have two grape shots in here. There's another grape shot down in here. Every time I play a deck that's tier one, like Jeskai, I, I'm like, reminded of why modern is such a great format because this deck and the decks like it they're really not much better than things like blue black fairies and blue black mill and big naya and elves and all the other wacky things that we play on this channel maybe i take that back a touch hollowed one when we played hollowed one that deck felt like it was kind of a notch above most of these other decks though they all feel pretty close. They're all they're all decks that you run kind of average and play well. You're going to 3-2 with them. You run kind of hot. You'll do better than a 3-2. Every time I've played humans, it's felt a little bit medium. I'm pretty sure there's no Ojitais in the Esper list. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Hard to pass up turn two search, right? Opponent's gonna go turn one goblin guide and we're gonna poop ourselves slightly, but is what it is. I imagine the Emmercool is in our sideboard for Celestial Colonnade beer matches. It seems quite good in those. Speaking of hollowed boys, I think this matchup's supposed to be good for us in the abstract. Let's see how it plays out. I think I'd rather be playing Mardu. Mardu's more proactive in general. I think playing a deck that, that's proactive is generally preferable in a format like Modern. It's easier It's easier to have less poor matchups when you can just kill your opponent some amount of the time. Nah, this deck doesn't really block Jekyll Pup anyway, so it's fine. That's fine, I didn't want that Tefri anyways. Joke's on you. I wish I could fetch a Sacred Foundry so I could have red mana and have double white still. 
No, don't bin that one. Now I have to fetch basic planes, though, so I have to choose to not have red mana. It's not looking good for a hero, chat. It's not... It's not looking good for the hero. I bottom those aggressively. I get to chump block a hollowed one and then windmill this uh, verdict next turn. Maybe stabilize. Depends on how much extra damage they deal with this flame blade at this turn. Yeah, Mod Modern is a format where being efficient with the spells that you're casting is very important. And Mardu's very good at being efficient with its spells. Whereas, whereas Jeskai has four copies of Cryptic Command and Supreme Verdict and Tefri. We've got we've got a lot of cards that are not particularly mana efficient. We definitely look like blue light control. You are not wrong. This is a good die roll to win. We probably would have been dead in the water if we'd have been on the if we'd have been on the draw. Okay, they're down to two cards in hand, and they don't they haven't drawn any of their recursive threats this game, which is a big deal for us. It would have been that. Fetch basic is land, windmill this verdict. Do you need to announce your flame blade adapt triggers? You do not. They're like prowess triggers. So when you move to damage and you tell your opponent, um, you have to acknowledge triggers like that when they would have a visible impact on the game state, which is when you would be dealing damage with them. Which I think is a shitty rule, but that's how the rules of Magic the Gathering work. I think, I think rules like that that discourage players from communicating clearly with each other are shitty rules. But I don't make the rules. I just play the game. Pretty sure I'm just in for uh, in for an extra path to exile here. The fact that Ascanta flips means I get to hold up Cryptic Command this turn as well. Yeah, but I mean, like, Modern's never been a format with a small metagame, right? Like, that's just not how the format works. I think I'm going to snap this path rather than Cryptic Commander do anything else here. Yeah, people who play a lot of professional magic communicate clearly because you know, that's the best way. That's the best way to avoid issues that happen. A lot of the issues that require judge calls happen because players don't communicate clearly. That's why whenever people ask for like suggestions when they're going to the first large magic tournament, the best piece of advice I can give for that is you cannot over communicate. You cannot you cannot be too clear with what the board state is and what you're doing at all times. The last card's a delve threat here. We have another path to exile, which is excellent. That's that's what we do to people that want to talk about Blood Moon being a reasonable magic card around these parts. There's other parts of the country where you're welcome. This is not one of them. This is Huglandia, and we will tolerate no blood moon apologists here the only the only acceptable comments about blood moon are it creates miserable gameplay and i enjoy playing it because it creates miserable gameplay uh you can whisper me on twitch you can message me on discord if you're already a subscriber which i see you are bj roth and you can also private message me on direct message me on twitter It was, a good, it was a good die roll to win. And we, we played that entire game looking like we were blue-white control, which is pretty impressive, right? Like, that that was kind of funny. And before the next uprising is 200 blood boot decks. Alright, so this is definitely a Celestial Purge. Celestial Purge is like kind of aces here, right? This is one of the reasons to have a bunch of them on our sideboard. Trim these counter spells. 
is electrolytes could is it nuts to trim a serum visions actually probably trimming search for Ascanta makes the most sense right Emmer coolers for celestial colonnade beer matches Marty had to die on his sword for his sass get him out of here Nah, Cryptic Command reads Fog Draw Card. I'm a I'm a big fan of Fog Draw Card. You could maybe the Azcanta is better than the Cryptic the fourth Cryptic. I'd buy that for a dollar. That seems okay. Like Path Snap Path is like very reasonable for disrupting what they have going on. Plus. You should always keep anything close to resembling a keepable hand against Hollowed One because your hand might look very different two seconds later. What do you feel about playing Seismic Swans? I think we have Scred Swans in the donation queue. I don't remember if it had Seismic Assault. I need to see an exact deck list as always, but that's probably an archetype that's funny that I would play. Morning, Captain Command. No, I don't think I'm supposed to path Jackal here. I think if they want to take my path, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like, unless they give this Flame Blade a lot of attack here, I'm just going to fetch a Hollowed Fountain tapped. And, like, our turn two will be Steam Vents tapped, path your thing. And then turn three is, like, Sulfur Falls, stab path your thing. Details. on how the donation deck system works can be found at this URL here. Niv with the $2 donation. Can I say unsubstantiated things like Blood Moon is a well-designed card or Modern is a turn four format where Stoneforge is too strong if I throw money at you first? <laughs> also, Barbershops has the fastest clock in Modern. Put this towards smarter. Oh, Niv. Niv, the regulars here are great. Thanks for making me smile. Barber Shops is a nickname for Lantern Control because Lantern Control takes a little off the top. Just like your friendly neighborhood barber. I feel like anyone who thinks twin should shouldn't be unbanned should be obligated to play like 200 matches of modern and they'll probably think differently. Humans would gobble twin up, yep. Storm is much faster and more consistent than twin. Lots of, lots of things. I got tired of Jeff calling me Full Metal Alchemist, so I changed my name to Full Flame from Full Flame Alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the bits, full flame. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Delve me, baby.
That's an excellent draw. It let's me snap this path without dealing damage to myself. I'm gonna be honest, Full Flame. I had no idea. I had no idea. I'm, I'm kind of glad you brought it to my attention, but I genuinely... <laughs> my brain likes to add letters and to words and stuff like that when I read them quickly. I thought it was funny for the first four months. Uh, Ziggs actually got a pretty good Hollow One matchup, huh? Like, like four paths to exile, four Snapcaster Mage is just like really, really good against what the opponent's deck is doing. Mm, I did give them their blood gas back here. Your name is 3991 Colin. That's weird. It's weird that your opponents put put letter numbers in your name like that. I loved that Snapcaster Mage. Now he's dead. I have no one to love for my Snapcaster Mage has died. If a faithful student, they can flash back here. Thanks, Blur. <laughs> my my gathering magic article, my gathering magic editor is gonna get a talking to from Watsy. It's like no more. Oh baby, we found a piece of candy, chat. I thought this Jeffrey was gonna be good. Welcome to Thunderdome. Welcome to Thunderdome. I, this is this is adorable. This is adorable. They're still casting a spell. This is a cute spell. Like there's a card in your deck that can kill this Bane Slayer Angel. They bolted themselves. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib, opponent. Your jib is cut in a fine direction. All right, two and two. Rubber band match for deciding if we're a real modern deck. Thanks everyone for hanging out here today. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream magic memes full time here on this channel. We play a ton of modern. We play some legacy. We play some vintage. We played some cube this morning because I was paid enough blood money to do so. If you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the people that keep me employed here full time. If you're not familiar with Twitch subscriptions start at $4.99 a month, or if you're one of the many people in the world who has Amazon Prime, if you link your Amazon account to your Twitch account, you get Twitch Prime included with that for free, and Twitch Prime gives you a free channel subscription to a channel of your choice every single month here on Twitch. You can also support my stuff by supporting some of my wonderful sponsors. MTGOTraders.com would love to buy and sell some Magic Online cards with you, and if you use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles using promo code Jeff5. You can save 5% on Magic. Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards there. Inkedgaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using code Jeff12, you can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags. And of course, I'd like to welcome everyone to Hooglandia. Please talk to your friendly hood na neighborhood moderator about receiving your complimentary timeout. There we go, there we go, there we go. All about them timeouts. This game seems fine. Turn two, Azkanta on the play. Turn three, Electrolyze. Generate some value. It was um, it was a little medium spell weaver for spoilers. The mana base was not. I think if you want to play Naya mid range, you probably want to look at the big Naya deck we'd played earlier. Um, I, think, I think there's some good feedback on the deck and like why why I would make changes to it. So you'll definitely want to catch that on YouTube. Morning, Steven, or afternoon. It's 1.30 now. My, how the time flies. Oh, no. Oh, no. Burp. 
pretty dead, chat. We're pretty dead, chat. Oh, Valico. We, I guess we have four Logic Knots. Logic Knots pretty good in this matchup. The, the Spell Quellers are pretty good, too. I don't think Rune Talo is very good in this matchup. So here's the problem with Rune Talo. Rune Talo only saves you from Valakut. It doesn't save your creatures. And since you need to kill their creatures, you need to kill them with creatures, just their Valakut being active. May I have my sword back, please? Marty is banned in this channel. You must unban them before you can give them a sword. Oh, Marty. Oh, Marty, I lost your name. I lost your name. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't keep the Planeswalkers alive anymore either. Yeah. I just, I don't think it's particularly good. It's really difficult. Like, by and large, your way to kill them is with... Cryptic Command's a good draw. Having, having four cryptics too, maybe, maybe this isn't as bad as I'm making it out to be. Let that be a lesson to all you Blood Moon Scoundrels. <laughs> Reddit is no joking matter, Marty. Just guys like the thinking person's burn deck that is correct. We're just not quite as quick as normal burn, which gives us a harder time here. I caught the burning. So how many burn decks did you get? Te Technically, if I were to accept the burn decks at ten at ten dollars per deck, we took in two hundred and fifty burn decks as donations on Monday. Instead of doing that, though, we're going to do a 24-hour stream because that just seems better for everyone. Yeah, I'm going to take the Logic Knot here. Seems valuable. Probably Electrolyze and End Step again. I think that's more Bird than I've played in a lifetime. That's true. There was some anti-cult resistance that tried to tried to shoot down some of the burn decks. <laughs> I would have accepted one burn league a day for 250 days. So another thing that's important here too is that another thing that makes this matchup hard for us is... The fact that my opponent can just, like, draw Valakuts naturally and just, like, make land drops and kill us and kill our creatures makes it hard for us to actually win the game. Prismatic Omen is scary for that reason. I do try to give feedback on deck lists when people send them to me, but there's a lot of people that send a lot of decks and there's only so many hours in the day, so... I try to look, but it's not always possible. People people in the subs discord generally take priority over people who aren't. No, I don't think so. Hey, M4400, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime subscription. I appreciate that. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Welcome back here. I swear, since they put the cube up, Magic Online's been more laggy than it normally is. It's gotten like getting gotten like laggier faster. I think I'm supposed to snap Electrolyze here at end step if they don't give me anything to counter. Yep. Subs Discord details are here. All the integrations are handled automatically. Just link your accounts up and you'll be able to pop on in there. 
I'm not too active in the standard channel on that Discord, but in the modern legacy channels, I generally keep up. That's not just me. Other people have been having latency issues too. Hey, the Lucanado with the brand new. Thanks for sharing that, Prime. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for helping keep me employed here. I think I'm actually keeping that. I think just like every point of burn is valuable here, right? Like this is eight, so I only need four or four more at this point. Mirror 213. Thank you very much and welcome. I appreciate the prime support. No, I don't follow any type of sports ball. It's not something I'm into. Not something that really floats my boat. <sighs> that fetch is actually good for us because it means that any other Bolt Helix or Snapcaster Mage will be lethal here. So if I helix them, that puts six cards in my bin, so I can helix them plus Logic Knot to counter this. If they have a second Scape Shift in hand, I'm going to die, but it is what it is. I'm going to leave Cryptic Command in my discard pile here. So if we draw land plus a Snapcaster Mage, we can snap Cryptic. Sounds good, Amethy. Well, do. Thank you for the support. Did I miss a sub? Oh, I did. Thank you. XIV. Thank you for keeping up the sub train. Thank you for the Twitch Prime support. Welcome. Sorry I missed that. You know how you can tell I like Jeskai as a deck? It's got a bad Valakut matchup. Everything I love in Modern has a bad Valakut matchup. Actual everything. Want to buy new moon thingy? Yeah, Alpine Moon could actually be okay in a deck like this. Bring in Emrakul. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that's just for Colonnade Beer matches. Uh, we have eight counter spells for Titan. We have four knots and four cryptic commands. It's less than we have for escape shift, but it's like not zero. After this match lap wraps up here is the last match of the Jeskai League. We're gonna got some Esper control coming up in the queue. And then if you are a legacy fan this evening, I will be back Wednesday night is my evening magic stream. So I'll be live this evening again about 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's about seven hours from now for those that aren't on Cornfield time. And I'll be playing some Legacy this evening. We've got one more Modern League after this one before we wrap up for the afternoon. Mill does have a good Valakut matchup. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Probably. I like combo control decks. I actually want to try... Someone sent me a list for... It was uh, Jeskai Possibility Storm, and that seems pretty sweet. Kind of want to try that in a... In, and with... If you put Possibility Storm in a Jeskai Shell, you could also play Nahiri. So you could play, like, Nahiri and Possibility Storm and have two different ways to combo your opponent. Seems quite sweet. I'm just supposed to play this to try and hit our land drops. Maybe, I don't know. There's no guarantee that I hit my land drops here. 
Death Raid Shaman is in most decks. Yep. We're, we're going to be playing two not Death Raid Shaman decks this evening for Legacy, but we'll see how they do. We have a blue-white land still deck, and we have a red-white uh, Painter Servant deck that we're going to be playing this evening. And maybe Goblin Charbelcher. I don't know. It's, it's tough for me to stream too late because I have to be up again tomorrow morning, but usually I get at least two leagues in in the evening. And I, and I need to be well-rested these next couple of days because Friday is going to be brutal. Uh, 8.30 p.m. cornfield time, about seven hours from now. I wait for the kids to go to sleep before I start in the evening. Well, I mean, that's an answer to that at least. Land. Land. All right, all right. That was actually pretty decent for us, right? Like, we killed their thing, and we hit our land drop for the turn, and they can't scape shift us next turn or tighten us. Bloodbraid Elf or another tracker would be annoying, but not the end of the world. Yep. Woof. That's a lot of aggression. Like, just this Bloodbraid Elf hitting us, plus, like, the naturally drawn Balakut threatening to pressure our health total is, like, gonna put us pretty far behind here. I guess the Field of Rune answers the Molten Pinnacle at some point. I think I'm supposed to shock myself here and jam this Tefri down their throat. We could actually die next turn if they have enough ramp, but I think I'm just supposed to stick my thing and hope for the best. And they're gonna restart again here in a second. The lag's getting really bad. Just Kai and Esper Control must be my lucky day to resub. Keep up the good content. Thanks, Equinox, for the 14th month, 14 months, and welcome back. There's Steve. Yeah, like I said earlier, ever, ever since the and it's not a it's not an issue with my hardware. Like my computer has 32 gigs of RAM. It's that magic online when it starts using a, a certain threshold of memory, it starts running much slower. As you can see here from the slideshow that's currently going on on our screen. Like, I don't even think, like, what's my, what's my CPU doing right now? Like, like, these are my, this is my system monitor. If you can make out these numbers, this doesn't zoom. Like, I've got a bunch of CPU cores that are barely being toggled. I've got 20, 20 plus gigs of memory free, just like. All right, all right. Welcome to Magic Online. Thanks for the bits extras. I appreciate you going to farm. All right, so I'm definitely supposed to field this Valakut here, right? I even get to use the Tefri to untap my lands. God, Helix was like the best draw in our deck there. And I even get to hold up Cryptic Command. Field of Root is such a great magic card. Also, Land Hype. Thank you, Zach. Thank you for the support. We might we might pull this out on the back of being able to field them off that Valakut. If they don't have another naturally drawn Valakut, we could be in a very good spot here. They do have five cards in hand though, with like these clues on board, so could go could still go either way, but we're definitely in a much better spot than we were a second ago. On the back of that helix draw. Let me get to Hold up cryptic command here, which is great. Mm, 
that's a beating. The sandbag said like a timeout. <laughs> All right, so here's the problem now. If I cryptic this blood braid elf, they could scape shift me. They can go untapped landscape shift me. No, you should never quell her a blood braid elf. Don't do that. They'll get to cascade again when they recast it. You're not, you're not gonna have a good time, especially against the lightning bolt deck. It's possible the spell quellers just aren't even good in this matchup. I don't think I can let this at the table. If they go untapped landscape shift, we are dead here, but I think that's, I think it's right to stop the blood braid elf. I just like don't have anything else going on. Like they missed a land drop. So like they had to draw exactly land and have the scape shift. Yeah, I can't I can't counter I can't counter bounce because they'll just they'll just float mana with the land in response. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. The last two couple last couple times we've played Jeskai, this deck has not felt particularly stellar. I know I know it's a good deck. I know it puts up plenty of results, but like honestly, this is this is one of the things that's tough to know with the way Magic Online and Wizards of the Coast hide their data. Like how much of the results that we see with Jeskai control are results that are happening just because this is an established archetype and there's a lot of people playing it. It's so, that's that's genuinely something we can't know. It could just be that I ran a little bit bad and like the deck is fine and it's, it's almost certainly like reasonable and playable, right? But I definitely, I don't, I don't know if like the number of results that this archetype has is proportional to the power level that it really brings to the table, especially in modern. It always it always feels to me like it has the kind of awkward my cards don't line up problem. It feels better than blue white control the last couple of times we played blue white control, but I also think blue white control is pretty rancid. So um, honestly, like the last time we played Jeskai control. This was a random 5-0 deck list. Someone donated for me to find a Tefri Jeskai deck list, a Jeskai Tefri, and I dug through a bunch of them, and this one looked interesting. I liked the cards they were playing in the sideboard, so that's why that's where I pulled this build from. Um, honestly, um, if you're interested in playing Jeskai Control, you should go back and watch the video archives of us playing Jeskai Nahiri fairly recently. Um, it was before Tefri was printed into the format, but the couple of times... That's, that's nonsense. Um, the couple of times that um, that we played Just Kind of Here, it actually felt really good. And like I mentioned earlier, I think uh, the idea of exploring a Just Kai Possibility Storm deck with access to Nahiri as well seems like it could be something I'd be interested in playing. Just like, again, getting that kind of combo finish in your deck in Modern so you can get some of those free wins by doing something that's objectively powerful, I think is very, very valuable. Uh, at any rate, let's move on to New Badge Hype. Welcome to the next badge up, Polarius Max. Enjoy your enjoy your silver your silver disc. What do we got next? Esper Control is the last one we're be closing up. Speaking of, we're just going through the control goulet today. This is a deck list that predates Tefri. One of these days I'll ask for a timeout and it'll get missed. Can you please put these towards Dia Valakut? 10 out of 10 will do. Thank you for the bits. I think Tefri's probably better than Jace in this deck, right? Do we think do we think I should go split it? Yeah, I think two Tefri, one Jace is probably reasonable. I think that's probably what I'm gonna do here. This deck has a Godless Shrine, a Hollowed Fountain, and Watery Graves, so it's probably better than that last one. Esper Charm is just not a card that's very good. All right, so uh, 